Hi everyone and Assalamu Alaikum. First of all, Eid Mubarak to everyone. Because of Eid, we are making our special dish today of lamb paya and I will add lamb meat to this as well. But because it takes a long time to clean them, so I'm first showing you how to clean them and we will show the rest of the ingredients later. So first of all, when you buy lamb paya from the butcher, it's up to you what size you want to cut them. I've had them this size, so um, the whole bees like this, the trotter and but I've had them cut into three sizes. Then you ask the butcher to flame them for you so all the hair on it actually goes burns. But after it's been flamed, you have to clean it properly, thoroughly, uh, where there's all black bits with a knife, you scrape it off. And I'm just showing you an easier way. If you have some just wheat flour, so you put it on top of the fire and rub the flour in, it will get this easier and cleaner quickly. So I'm gonna thoroughly wash it two or three times and then I'm gonna scrape them with a knife and take any hair or any dirt off. this the butchers flamed this for me so all the hair on the hooves and uh, trotters burn so you just get a good scraping knife and scrape all this off so they come clean like this and just to further check where the skin is just open up a bit to see if there's any hair that have gone inside but this looks clean, so wash it thoroughly three or four times because you don't want any hair in there. But with the flaming, they do mostly all burn off. when the skin goes off there do be just a few hair so thoroughly wash them out but the bush has done a good job there's most of them are clean so here's the lamp fire that I showed you earlier we thoroughly washed it this is three kilos I've had from the butchers and I've had it cut into two, two pieces. And with the three kilos of lamb fire, I'm using here leg of lamb, but cut into very large pieces. This is one and a half kg. This is optional. Some people just like the gravy with the fire, but I've just noticed that when you add some meat to it, it goes thicker and more tasty. The rest of the ingredients are got four large bulbs of garlic that I've just peeled. You have to put a lot of garlic and onion in this because I'm not using any tomatoes. And this is six medium-sized onions, some olive oil, and for the spices, we've got green chilies, large piece of ginger, salt, this is coriander powder, and bizarre chili powder. So let's start off the recipe. So I'm first of all putting all the fire trotters in. I'm using a large pot, Dejka, because um, 
it's a big amount so i'm not doing it in a pressure cooker but if you want to make it in a pressure cooker this will be half the time so to that i'm going to first add two kettles of water or two jugs of water all the garlic in this is about two tablespoons of salt just cutting up all the onions just in thick chunks because it's going to take a long time for them to boil so everything would like go soft in there You can make the garlic or onion into a paste if you want to, it's totally up to you, but the amount should stay the same, four bowls of garlic and six of onions. That's how you're going to make the gravy nice and thick. I'm going to add the leg meat now of lamb because uh, sometimes trotters are harder than the lamb and it might take more longer to cook so I'll check after an hour if the meat is soft I will take them out and then leave them still to cook to this I'm just going to grate the ginger in now and then I just have to leave this for at least one or two hours to cook. The recipe to make the banan. And because there are so many recipes out there for Gurbani meat, you can make these with any dish you like on Eid. And because it's an Eid video, I'm making a lamb pie that will go with these naan. So here are the ingredients. So I have got one kilo MacDougall's plain flour, half a cup of oil, just two spoons of butter, that's for to put on top of the naan. And this is one packet of dried yeast and one spoon of sugar and one spoon of salt. And we're gonna mix and bind all the flour together with a glass of milk. Um, I don't know how much milk to use, but you're just going to make it into a medium soft dough and two medium sized eggs. So this recipe is for five to six naan. If you would like to make more, just add the flour and yeast more. So let's start. So first of all, you just, in a bowl, add the yeast and one spoon of sugar. And it's very important that you have to mix this with just lukewarm water, not too hot water or cold water. So just give it a mix with some warm water and leave it for a few minutes so the yeast can start bubbling so while the yeast is just starting to bubble i'm going to add the rest of the ingredients So this is one tablespoon of salt. And I'm going to add two medium sized eggs to it. a rough mix and then when I add the yeast and milk I'll then um, 
make the dough with my hands. Just mixing the salt and eggs in first. So after a few minutes, the yeast has started bubbling. I'm just adding that. And just like you make normal chapati dough, but try not to make it too hard because then you won't, uh, you'll find it hard to make the naan bread. So it has to be a nice medium soft dough. So I've put all one glass of milk in this, in a kilo of, and it looks about right. So you can see like once the dough is like medium soft like this, I'm adding half a cup of oil so it can get mixed into the dough. So it's nice and soft, not too hard. <clears throat> so we're going to leave this on the side with just a tea towel on top. And because it's a warm temperature, just leave it in the kitchen or the room. So we need to put this for an hour at least. So it will double in size then. So after an hour, this is how the flour should look. It's risen and it's gone more softer. So I'm just going to half this to make three portions of naan. <clears throat> I'll leave the rest so I can make them later. So they're slightly bigger than chapatis because I don't know about you, but I like my naan a bit nice and soft. So if you want them thinner, you can make small ones, but that's about the size I'm making. I'm just, I'm just putting the flame on and I've decided to make them in a large frying pan today because I've tried both ways out and I think putting them under the grill they come turn out better than the tavas so this is very easy as well so once you've made the ball of dough just leave it for a few seconds so it can settle and then roll it out it would be easier like that then So with a fork, I'm just making like a crisscross pattern.
I haven't put oil or anything in the pan because uh, we're going to put butter on it after. So it just needs to cook from the bottom for a few seconds. I say about a minute or two and then we'll pop it onto the grill. So I've been checking on this every half an hour and uh, if, to see that if it's cooked and also adding water. And I'm just checking now, this has been two hours it's been on the pot. And just by looking at it, I can see, I think it's nearly done because I checked it half an hour ago, it wasn't. And you can see that the meat is like falling off the bone, coming off, that's when it's done. And um, I, halfway through cooking after an hour, I took the meat out because it was soft. And I've just put that in now, that's very soft. So the next stage is now that I'm going to add a little bit of oil and the spices and green chilies and we're going to make this into a very dry masala so when it's all uh, dried up I will add just one jug of water. Um, so you don't need uh, much spices in this. Here I have three spoons of bisar, three spoons because it's a large amount I told you before it's three kilos, one spoon of coriander powder and that's about eight green chilies. And I'm just going to add two spoons of olive oil. It doesn't need much oil as well because of the fat from the trotters. The pie have like a gelatine natural oil that comes out. So just two I think is enough. Two spoons. You can see how nicely cooked the lamb is. Sometimes some of the meat comes off the bones, they separate, but it doesn't matter. That's because um, it bees very soft and it falls off. So you can just take the bones out if you want to. In my house, everybody likes it very soft, so um, I try to cook it as much as it's uh, nice and uh, soft of coming off the bone. So I've, after I put the chilies and oil in, I've did put this on a high heat for about 20 minutes and the meat is ready now to put the water in because the oil has come off and all the liquid is drying off and the chili is cooked so I'm just going to add one jug of water to this and then the gray will be ready after a few boils So further about 10 or 15 minutes and this will be ready then to take off. So this is the final stage, it's finely cooked. So you're looking at a gravy like this, not too thin and not too thick. Because I'm going to serve it with rice, boiled rice and with the naan. So the final thing I'm putting in the ingredients is some coriander and two spoons of garam masala. going to leave it on a low heat for five minutes and then I will shut this now. So finally after a long cooking process beautiful lamb shanks with lamb buyer a beautiful thick soup and I'm serving it here with white rice and homemade naan. These naan I made earlier in the video so they came out like this. So inshallah enjoy your Eid and make this recipe everyone Eid Mubarak.